Hey guys, Arkin here, and I was looking back over my rotation guide for dual wield, and it was a bit confusing to say the least. So I'm going to be going over it today, uh, over the abilities more than just the rotation for both single target and AOE. If you want to see how to gem and such an enchant, then you go to my other guide. I'll put up the link on the screen now, and you'll be able to see it at the end as well on the outro. But I'm just going to show this guys again in case for anyone who was confused on that video, because I know there's probably going to be a few people who were, because it was a uh, pretty complicated to say the least. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the necessary talents first, which is in tier 1 and tier 5 of the talent tree. You want to go and play Gleech for a normal fight, since you'll be using Plague Strike and Howling Blast a lot, you can just use this off cooldown, it will still keep your DPS up, it will even increase it just a bit. Blood Tap is a bigger DPS increase than the other two, but if you prefer using the other two and don't like having an extra button to press, then just use them, you won't lose too much DPS at all really. And on your tier attacks, you won't be spending your runic power on frost strike. You always want to keep it over 20 runic power, however, because then you get a frost strike whenever, and you have to use that on killing machine and not obliterate when dual wielding. So if you're under 20 runic power and killing machine procs, then you're going to be using your killing machine late, which is going to really, really damage your two set here. Which means whenever you're killing machine procs, you get 500 mastery stacking, and it does drop off very easily. So you want to be using killing machine as soon as it comes up to give you a six second gap to get more killing machines. Howling Blast this is going to be your main single target attack uh, that's not using runic power. It takes one frost and you want to be using your death runes on it as well. But there is a thing where you have to get rid of your unholy runes because when you're getting rid of your unholy runes, your blood tap will work by converting your unholy runes into death runes, which means even more Howling Blast. Plague Strike is going to be another main ability that you're going to have to keep your diseases up. Use it when you we use it when there's a free unholy rune up and there's no death or frost runes up and when your blood plague is 15 seconds or less. Obliterate also works with spec, it'll do a tiny bit more damage than Howling Blast, so if you've got a spare and holy rune, a spare frost rune, and bear in mind Killer Machine is not up, do not use a Killer Machine and Obliterate, although sometimes it'll proc like as you press it, which is very unfortunate and unavoidable, but you won't be using that to get rid of more unholy runes to help with your blood tap conversion into your death runes. Plague Leech, as I've already mentioned, the talents. I've got this down on two buttons because I had a free one. Death and Decay, if you've got a free and holy rune and, you, and you're... Uh, Blood Plague is above 15 seconds, just drop a Death and Decay down so long as the boss is going to be staying there. It'll do some damage, it's better than just wasting an Holy Rune and a Death Rune in that case. Pestilence, you want to be using this to spread diseases between targets. You Obviously Howling Blast will spread your Frost Fever, but you will need to spread your Blood Plague as well. Make sure you have a uh, Blood Plague up, of course, when you spread them, it's going to be useless. You want to have Soul Reaper, this is uh, actually worse than Howling Blast now, but a little bit, because... It interferes with your runes quite a lot, and it doesn't actually do much damage at all in uh, dual wield, unfortunately. It does more of a two-handed ability, this one. And Pillar of Frost, you want to be using this off cooldown with any other cooldowns like that, such as your your um, engineering thing on your gloves, which gives you strength. Once you've got all your strength together, including pots, of course, you want to be popping all them three together, and then you can use something like Raise Dead. This is a two-minute cooldown. You want to be using it pretty much off cooldown, but mainly using it when you have the top strength. So when your strength is maximised, you want to be using Raise Dead to get the gall up, and then it'll be doing the maximum damage. You don't have to keep your strength up while it's up. It'll just go off the strength that you had when it was summoned for the rest of the time. So it lasts one minute, so it's a big DPS increase. It does about 1-2% of your DPS if you do right I believe. And Outbreak, you want to be never using this unless you're at range uh, from the boss so you can apply Blood Plague, otherwise just use Howling Blast. Outbreak is a waste of a global cooldown if you're in melee range. Empower Rune Weapon, you may not even need to use this as a dual wheel because you have a, a lot of runes spinning around all the time, but if you ever find that you're out of uh, runic power, say for Frost Strike when you're killing machine procs, you can just pop this to get free uh, Frost Strike to use that killing machine up to keep your two set going. Or if you run out of runes and runic power, then it's a great opportunity to pretty much use this and reset your rotation. Symbiosis for Death Knights will grant you a mushroom that uh, gives diseases to nearby targets. Good for AoE, single target, don't do it. Same as Outbreaks, just a waste of a global cooldown. And Anti Magic Shell uh, in this expansion, probably one of the most important DPS abilities a Death Knight has. On fights such as Garrosh, you'll be using this pretty much off cooldown because he does so much magic damage abilities. So much magic damage abilities. So many damaging abilities that do magic and I said that wrong as well but I will not go try again and yeah basically so anti-magic shell is very very useful for you and you'll be able to get 100 runic power straight off an ability on Garrosh fight and some of the fights where it will be a little less but with the glyph of regenerative magic you'll be getting those seconds back that you didn't uh, absorb the damage with but yeah this pretty much uh, the same as empower rune weapon will help reset your rotation because you're getting so much frost strikes which means blood taps and so on 
Uh, Ice Land Fortitude, you want to be using this to get out stuns if there's any stuns in the fight, otherwise when you're taking a lot of damage near the end of the fight, just pop it. It's not very good, it's only 20% damage, but it's something of course. Raise Ally is your, um, is your Resurrect Ally. Uh, your battle res even. And Horn of Winter, this is a very useful ability. I've got the Glyph on. Uh, some fights I have it on, some fights I don't. Depends if I need the Dark Simulacrum Glyph or anything else. Please no copy past the Reno. And <laughs> Horn of Winter basically is something you will use off cooldown uh, as much as you can, but only when you've got nothing else to do. So that's why you put the Glyph on. It's a, actually a little bit of a DPS increase. And Arcane Torrent for a little bit of runic power or to silence anyone. And I'm just going to be performing the rotation now. Okay, so you want to be starting off a fight with Army of the Dead, unless there's like a phase where you do more damage to the boss, then you don't want to be starting off with Army of the Dead, you want to be using it then when he's doing more damage. But you want to start off with Army of the Dead. Now, bear in mind, you don't pull with Outbreak on the boss here. You want to be starting with a Howling Blast, Plague Strike, pop your strength cooldowns, then you use that killing machine up, make sure it doesn't drop below 20, remember. You want to be watching the stacks of the, the trinket if you have it, which you probably don't. When it gets to 10, Raise Dead, I think I actually failed it there. But that's when you've got the most strength when that uh, trinket sacks the ten, or when you've got anything else. And you want to keep, make sure you keep using those killing machines up. Got a little arcane torrent there for some, because I dropped below twenty. And as you can see, I've got unholy runes that aren't being used, so I can just whack a different decay down. And I have no unholy runes that aren't being used at the moment. One coming off now, as we can see, I've actually dropped below. And then a little outbreak there, as you can see, and empower room weapons. You can see the runes dropped off. This will not happen. Uh, I'm saying it as you can see about 100 times. I've just realised, but this uh, lack of runes will actually not happen really in a raid because you've got a lot of buffs and stuff on you, and it won't be happening because of that. And that's pretty much the rotation here. Soul Reaper, if it comes down to it, like you don't really need to. And this is pretty much the single rotate, single target rotation here. As you can see, Pillar of Frost coming off. I'm just gonna press that as soon as it's back. And Plague Leech, of course, is a very useful ability. They, uh, you can just Plague Leech there and reapply. Remember to reapply your disease when doing Plague Leech, but still prioritize Frost Strike above because it doesn't actually, unlike Obliterate, where it does extra damage for the disease in the target, Frost Strike doesn't. So you can just use Frost Strike when your diseases aren't on. But obviously, diseases do damage, so it's best to get them on as quick as possible. And that's pretty much the rotation for Frost. I hope this has helped out. And just remember to keep those unholy runes away so you can get blood taps from them. They, as you can see there, I've got a death rune on the unholy rune, so I've got these saved up to spin around and become their own runes. Because so we don't need to be converting frost runes to death runes since we're using howling blast. We want unholy runes to be converted to death runes and death runes to be cut to be converted into their own death runes. So that's pretty much it for the rotation, guys. I hope this helped you all, and thanks for watching. I'll have more videos out soon. We starting kill started killing heroic bosses, so I'll have videos on them out. Uh, probably this Wednesday onwards and that's all really so thanks for watching I'll see you all soon okay so a quick bit on the AOE rotation here it's pretty much the same as your single target rotation you want to get your diseases on don't use outbreak remember you want to spread your diseases with pestilence get a death and decay down to use up that unholy rune then just howl and blast to your heart's content don't bother using up the unholy runes for obliterate you completely leave obliterate alone just keep howling blasting make sure you get howling blast howling blast and then if you've got an unholy rune spare either plague strike or death and decay and then just carry on howling blast in and you get a lot of AoE and it's very very fun remember to use uh, the rest of the rest of the rotation is just the same using strength um, abilities and raising dead and power room weapon and such it's just forgetting about obliterate and using death and decay when it's off cooldown on holy rune make sure it's never on death rune if you've got two unholy runes on cooldown for some reason and you have a uh, death and decay available just wait uh, and that's about it really but, so thanks all for watching and I'll see you soon